Okay, what's up, people? Um, again, we're gonna get back into some vampire crap. Um, fucking drink some blood, kill, 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 whatever the fuck you want. Um, yeah, let's get in this. Let's go. Okay, so we rested. What's in here? Oh, refill. Um, analyze Williams. Oh. Um, crafting on a workbench. You can craft medical treatments to heal sick citizens. Serums to boost yourself. Weapon upgrades. Got it. You first need to analyze the components you found to unlock new recipes. Click the to analyze components. Uh, analyze. Boom. Uh, regenerate 300 health points instantly. Then 150 health points over 50 se 15 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's add this shit. Cause I know we got some things here. Oh, uh, can I not upgrade yet? I know I got two, uh, two things. No? Can't do anything? Alright. Okay. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. The sun is about to rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. Uh, it is a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach a vampire to observe their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities I've personally observed over the last 10 years while in interviewing a few va vampires or econ as they prefer to call themselves. Supernatural seed. A vampire can act and move like a mortal in all his actions but the, but the trained eye will spot that they have the neatest senses and can react quicker than any mortal on a few occasions alarm surprise necessity to flee I have seen a vampire move so quickly it is almost as if he had vanished just to reappear somewhere else the human eye cannot follow their movements when they act so quickly but it is not a teleport or deem dematerialization de it is only a supernatural speed for me it's like a cat like attribute which allows them to run dodge or jump longer and faster than us I also noticed that such speed seems to exhaust them and they are bound to physical limitations mesmerism mesmerism oh mesmerism uh, one of the most powerful abilities a vampire can deploy is the capacity to force a moral to obey them I call this trait mesmerism but it has nothing to do with the mortal ability to uh, alter a subject's mental state. A vi vampire can bend a mortal to their will, and they can even break a mind. A vampire I interview interviewed 
even told me the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent the damage will be. As if the vampire could literally fracture their target's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that this ability requires time to master and that the result could vary widely vary widely from the subject to another. Implant a false memory, erase a powerful one, the possibilities are endless and frightening. Uh, blood awareness. Would you stop doing that? Blood awareness. This may be may be the most catastrophic ability of all uh, concerning vampires since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us vampires crave for blood they must use their will to restrain themselves from friendsly friends frenziedly drinking every drop of blood they can see they need blood to function and to express their full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak, even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst. This urge, this need for blood, may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that the blood could sometimes blind them, since its smell and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses a vampire can almost see blood all around them inside warm bodies through walls on a supposedly clean weapon etc the same vampire even told me that he can see if a mortal has clean blood or is ill and that in some ca cases he can even sense diseases infected clothes or even items in a room. If this is true, it could have so many medical applications. It's almost Baker's belief. I have uh, so much time. Yeah, you have so much time, huh? You just take your time, I guess. Holy crap. These really do have a lot of reading. <coughs> Dear Jonathan, I asked Nurse Crane to sec secure an office for you on the second floor. Please forgive the austere decoration, but Pembroke Hospital is not exactly the Ritz. Sorry to let you discover your office alone, but I need to sleep a little before going back to work. I'm just a mere mortal, after all. I also gave orders to let you rest and for the staff never to never to never enter your room. You will be able to sleep all day without being disturbed and work all night without raising any suspicion. I'm afraid the place is quite messy, but you'll be able to conduct your experiments here at your own pace. You'll also notice there is an open window with a scaffolding that will allow you to enter or exit the hospital without being noticed. I admit, imagine how awful, new, and disturbing this all must be for you. Believe me, I have studied enough of your species to understand what you must now be facing and feeling. Be assured, I'll do whatever I can to help you in this ordeal. Know that you're not completely alone facing it. I'm glad I met you. These dark times we're all presently we're all presently facing. I hope our future collaboration will yield great results. Welcome to Pembroke, uh, my esteemed colleague. We shall talk soon. Yours sincerely, Edgar Griffin Swansea. Uh, P.S. I left a copy of some of my notes concerning what I have discovered about an in. in Econ and last few wheel. Oh, yeah, we just read that. Okay. Yeah, we just read that. Thanks. Thank ya. Aluminum powder, shillings. Let's go to the workbench and. What is it? You got a fucking. Oh, no. Did I not grab that shit? Uh, 
Oh, I guess not. Alright. So what do I use uh, the shillings for? That's what I want to find out. It's locked, all right. Okay. You sounded a little pissed off that I was trying to do that. It's locked, all right. Fine. Fuck. Used hacksaw. Uh, patient Thomas. Elwood, male, age 28, followed by Dr. Tippetts, <laughs> oh, funny name, status, uh, convalescences, I don't know, date of admission, September 16th, date of release, to be determined, notes, the patient face has been heavily burnt and disfigured by bomb during the war. Even with the use of the strongest sedatives, he affirms to regularly endure severe pain from the wounds, as if the pl flames are still burning under the skin, he says. Uh, explanations of the critica criti oh, fuck, uh, criticalized I don't know. Uh, tissues show no trace of inflammation, infection, or swelling. Scars are clean. Could it be a cause of persisting nerve damage? The patient never ceases to blame himself for his dis disfiguration. Could it be a cause of guilt of the survivor? Phantom pain manifesting as a punishment for not dying with his comrades? I don't know. It's, seems pretty sad, you know? Okay. So, I'm guessing this is, like, just, like, kind of free roam stuff. Um, bottle of cheap gin. Small bottle. Oh, yeah, it'll take some gin. Let's get some Sprite up in that bitch. Some lemon juice. Let's make a good fucking meal. Hmm. Yeah, where are we going? Where are we going? Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Oh. Uh. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's mind, you see. I bet. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. <laughs> okay. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard Syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. 
You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Alba? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can right. leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the monk. Okay. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Oh, I'm inside the wall. Oh, shit. Okay, um, can we Good ask about her? Get some info. Doctor, I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position. Pip Pip Hooray! Well, it's <laughs> that your help will be appreciated, uh, Doctor. Funny names. Um, so ask about your life. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry. I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? <laughs> Spanish flu. <laughs> How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is Shut down the fucking states. And no matter how states. qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. <laughs> You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse. Ah, shit. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Yeah. Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation. Whether he deserved it or not. So, I will go ahead and tell you. If you don't like games where you have to constantly... Medical checkup. Uh, constantly get info. Do this is not a game for you. Yourself, I'm fine. Really. I just need to sleep. Good evening, Miss Halcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. I want to know who you are. Can I help you? 
unless you're here to fix my face. Oh, no. the burn guy. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries. Am I uh. right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. Fucking German. Still call me Thomas Elwood. Even though I'm German. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. Reconstructive surgery has been very successful for some soldiers. I don't want to wear a bloody mask for the rest of my life. I'd rather stay here and just be forgotten. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Damn. So I failed at that. Course. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Yeah, that sucks. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's blood. <coughs> I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Well, you're just a rainy Why fucking... Feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? Bucket of sunshine. I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. See if we can retry this hand. I don't know. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Let me love burn. Left me to burn. So I'm guessing. Soldier, do you need assistance? I'm fine. Just do something for this pain, will you? That's all I'm asking. How close are you to Miss Hawcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside is all. Well. While I'm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. There we go. Um, you 
You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the rest. So at least it doesn't just stay locked. I can try so again. So that's cool. You know that's not sanitary. And why not? <coughs> She's only sucking a few message. drops of my blood. And the pain. I know. It's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. So I went with this one, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Goodbye for now, Mr. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Tell me, Thelma, why do you feel so attached to Mr. Mm -hmm. Eldon? Why him? I'm... Um, what the fuck? I, I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. And I do it so again. He's the only mortal I okay. find interesting. Some of these videos, like, why would I click on that? Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. <laughs> no, for I am a vampire doctor. Right. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Okay. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. All right, I need to talk to the... Who's this? But the suffering oh, I can't talk. Um, oh, you. Are you okay? Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed. <laughs> oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? This I'll like label this, uh, right. getting to know my patients. I don't know. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little or my way around, I guess. I don't know. Who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. What do you, what do, you do? do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks, and I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Mm. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop to repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Okay. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really, but I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. 
poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers' trade union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. Should be why you end up in William Kill him. Den. I had received alarming news about his recent Kinda hungry. Yeah. I went to his place and he refused <laughs> to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here, this Miss Hawcroft. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Oi. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. We'll talk to you later, man. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Uh, let's play City Scouts. No, I'm good, man. I'm playing something else. Daily routine. Thanks, Tom. We're, we're offering. Uh, no, we need to... Uh, we'll talk to you here soon. Uh, actually, let's just get it over with. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. <coughs> but unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Knowledge has always been and will remain our main weapon. And it has always come at a price. And personal initiative. It is not a question of initiative. It is a question of integrity. These men and women have put their faith in us, Dr. Reed. 
It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Not necessarily. It could uh, reveal some great attributes. Just saying. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Ha <laughs> ha! I got some shit. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me. Since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Um. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. I don't know, can I fucking hit you? Oh, I didn't unlock anything? I thought it said I unlocked something. Thank Whatever. You for your time. I don't like you. I just might end up drinking your blood, sir. Okay, let's go ahead. We can go upstairs. If I can find it. Where are those stairs at? I need to talk to... Oh, there we go. What is this? Prevent disease. Careless... Careless spitting, sneezing, coughing, spread influenza, spread by droplets sprayed from nose and throat. Do not cough in public. <coughs> I just did. I'm fucking... Scared. Faggots. Yeah, little faggots. Um, where is what's his name's office? Oh, it's all the way upstairs, huh? Isn't it? Right? Yeah. Am I right? Oh no, it's not. Um. Not now. Please come back later. Oh, okay. Um, where is that? Rest in bed till the next night. Find out who is spreading spying on Thelma. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to do that, huh? Who the fuck is spying on my patient? We gotta kick your fucking ass. Is there an option to rest, I guess? Uh, oh yeah, rest.
Hello. If I'm to stay here until my research is complete, I'd better learn to hide my true nature from the mortals. Okay, so about my thirst for blood. What do you want? Are you talking to me? Yes, Nurse Crane. How can I help you? I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis, you say? Our supply of antiseptics is nearly depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... What type of hospital are you running? No antiseptics? You have been away too long, Doctor. With the war and now this epidemic, supplies have been running scarce for months now. I may have a solution. In France, during the war, drugs shortage was a daily problem, and we had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. <coughs> what do you mean? If combined correctly, certain household chemical products can be used in a pinch instead. Now, it. where's the hospital storeroom? The storeroom? Fat chance. This is the Pembroke. And space is luxury we don't have. Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. Perhaps I should look there first. Where is this morgue? It's the large building behind the hospital. You'll need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. Oh, why, thank you. The abandoned morgue behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. Can't get the On other keys there. too. Thank you, nurse. Singing, I work here now. I know, I'm just saying, it might be useful for me to have access to almost everything, you know. So we go back here. I'm thinking this room. Well, Where is... Oh. She said back entrance, didn't she? The morgue. The morgue. Thelma Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? I should investigate. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague? Are you a doctor, too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Chadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Chadana. Pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean, you used to be a doctor? Okay, so that's the morgue. Revoked? Right. No, sir. Maybe. It's just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. Oh, um, personal quest. You're a, a pawn broker. broker. I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. What about... Who comes here Who to, comes trade? to trade? Bandits? It's very unhygienic, even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers, for the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. Uh. What kind of good? People are deceiving, people, you know. It's not always easy to buy things. So I trade, I exchange. Some people sell, some others buy. I like to help. Um. Good you know, let's just say goodbye. I cannot enter. Okay, so. In the name of mercy, they depend on you. Nurses are needed. Oh, okay. Mm. So where is this back door? He said he was in charge of the morgue. 
Oh, that's my timer. Um. Let me, uh. Let me go ahead and save this, uh. Video. Close the broadcast and I'll reopen it for you who's watching this. Uh. This is only gonna take a second, but I'll be back. 